I'm in Arizona for the weekend, looking for some good Saturday night poker action at the Talking Stick Resort and Casino. In for 300 at the 2-3 no limit. Let's get it rolling. In the two seat with Jack 10 of spades on the button, a small raise from under the gun, one caller, and I call as well with position. Both blinds call, and we're going five ways to a flop. Five, six, seven with two spades, so I flop a flush draw. The big blind leads out for 25 after the small blind checks. Then the preflop razor calls, as well as the next player. If I had a little better draw of Jack-9, 10-9, or 10-8 of spades with that extra equity from a gut shot, I would like a raise better than with just this hand, which is basically a naked flush draw. I call with the small blind also coming along. So everyone is still in. The prettiest card in the deck comes on the turn, giving me the flush. With also the added bonus of eliminating all possible nut flush combos. Action sadly checks around to me. I put out a half size pot bet of 80 and get everybody to fold. Standard open to 15 with pocket jacks under the gun. Get three callers behind me. Then a squeeze to 70 from a very short stack big blind. I could just flat, since the players left to act behind me have stacks under 100 big blinds and won't be able to take full positional advantage against me. I think with jacks, though, too many overcards can't possibly come on the flop. So raising and getting the pot heads up seems like a slightly better option to me. Everyone folds. Back to the big blind who puts in his remaining $38 and shows us ace-queen. We are off to the races. Not the best start out of the gates. Ace-queen takes the commanding lead. Pocket Jacks closes in a little bit on the turn with the added straight draw. Six out to the riverback stretch, and he hits it! Pocket Jacks with an amazing comeback, and the jockey wins a purse of an outstanding $330. Just an amazing race to watch from start to finish. Still stacking my chips from the previous race I just won, I get dealt Ace King of Diamonds the very next hand in the big blind. The under the gun straddle is on, and the now under the gun player raises to 20, with only having $70 to start the hand. The button calls. This player also just made a comment about my previous hand, saying I was very aggressive with just pocket jacks. That comment makes it look like he is a type of passive player that is only used to getting it all in preflop with aces or kings. Pretty clear 3-bet. I make it 100 to go. The original razor calls, which is what I expected, but then the button also calls, which is not what I expected. Going to a flop with $278 already in the middle, with only $125 effective left remaining, I already know that I'm going with my hand no matter what the flop is. Even if I miss completely, I would be getting better than 3-1 to one on a call if I checked and the button went all in. Two overs would be getting that price on a call, so I'd much rather bet myself and possibly get him off a better hand. I think his range is small pocket pair heavy that just don't feel like folding preflop. Him folding those pocket pair hands even some of the time would be a huge profit gain for me, given the size of the pot already. The short stack that's already all in could of course easily have a pocket pair, and getting this villain out of the pot wouldn't really mean much, but the short stack could also easily have a weaker Broadway holding than me, something like ace-jack, king-queen, that ace-king-high would be the best hand. So I already know what I'm going to do before even seeing the flop. He folds, not thinking for too long. I already take the small side pot built preflop. The board bricks out, but I take it down with ace-king high against ace-queen high from the short stack. Comment Jax lets the table know he folded a pair, adding more commentary on my aggressive style of play. The player to my direct left then also adds in some commentary on my play, 
saying there's always another hand to put your money in with. Not sure what that has to do with much, since we're playing a cash game and can always rebuy. I don't think it's a good idea to fold ace-king getting better than 3-1, to one, so I would never, ever fold. This gives you an example on many players' mindset at this low stake level, though. They don't even try to get it in, unless they know it's a sure thing. He just pulled down his pants and yanked it out. You know, like, say hello to Mr. Happy. Gross. It wasn't gross. It was kind of cool. So did you do it with him? Of course I did. These hands were all within the first 45 minutes, running it up quickly to a $737 stack. Not much happened the next two hours or so until this hand. A loose calling station limps under the gun with a very short stack. I raise to 15. Two players call in position. Comment Jax calls in the big blind. Then the limper folds when he was closing the action. Not sure what he was looking for there, but four ways to a flop. Jack, seven, queen, two hearts. I don't like betting here with three other players in the hand that should hit this board pretty hard. I check, looking for a free turn card to try and improve and get exactly what I asked for. I bet 40 with top pair, top kicker with a gut shot. Not a great hand on this board, but I can get some value from many pair plus straight draws like King-10 or Jack-10, or some type of flush draw as well. Both players in position on me fold, then comment Jax, clicks it right back to me. I don't see many worse hands raising like this. It looks to me like he has at least two pair. Much of the time he has a straight with Ace-10 or 10-9. Ace-King does horrible against that range. Plus, I could have much stronger hands in this spot anyway. So I decide on a tight laydown. I don't think I could win unimproved very often. Then even if I do improve with like a 10, Villain would almost never pay me off with worse. Even if we add in some combo draws, my hand is still in pretty bad shape. We would have to add in all combos of King-10, Queen-10, and Jack-10 to even be close to being tied in equity. I don't think he would normally play those hands with a raise anyway. Maybe never. Folding seems like the better play to me. This is the last hand. It was a short three-hour session. The only big hands I played were all with premium holdings. I have two red tens in the small blind. See a limp from an under-the-gun short stack. And a tiny isolation raise to ten from comment jacks. And the new player next act calls the ten also having a short stack. I make it 60 to go. Everyone folds to the new player on the button, and he goes all in. Nothing to say about this hand. It basically played itself. Villain shows ace-jack offsuit, and we are off to the races again. Flop is looking good for pocket tens as he sprints off to the early lead. Coast is clear in the turn as he pulls even further ahead. And the river closes things out for a wider wire victory for pocket tens. Everything just went well for the poker statistician jockey here tonight in the desert, winning both races pre-flop, as well as the perfectly executed ace-king maneuver, winning three out of the three showdowns. He gallops away from Arizona's talking stick casino with a $522 profit, looking to get back at it next week at his home track in Southern California.